How's it going, guys? Dulos here again. We're back today with our special guest, Joe. He's risked life and limb and freedom and safety to join us from the People's Republic of New York to share his story. Once again, this is not legal advice. This is more to tell his story and share some information and a perspective in order to protect his identity, his loved ones, his family, and his friends. We've obscured his face, we've changed his voice, and we're going to call him Joe. Once again, we split Joe's story into two parts, this being part two. The first part showing how Joe got interested in firearms in the first place and what led him to seek one for personal protection. In the second part, we're going to look at the process that Joe had to go through to obtain a pistol permit in his county of his state. And you can decide whether he lives in a free state or behind enemy lines. In Joe's state of New York, you can own long guns such as shotguns and bolt-action rifles and certain semi-automatic rifles as long as they don't have uh, the unsafe features, quote-unquote, of the SAFE Act. If you're interested in the New York SAFE Act, I have a video for that. But in New York, in order to own a pistol, in order to even touch a pistol, you have to go through a permit process. Uh, a lot of states have this. Uh, some have it for concealed carry, some have it for ownership, uh, some have it only for uh, concealed carry. Joe's County is the hardest in his state outside of New York City. Uh, he has to go through a long process, and he's going to share that with us today. About how long ago did you first start the process to obtain uh, a legal pistol permit in your county? So I thought about actually starting the whole process about eight months ago, which if you really think about it is a very long task. And I was actually expecting it to be even maybe longer than that based off of my area. Uh, normally it takes anywhere from three to six months. Uh, and then a few years ago after the SAFE Act passed, it was nine months to even a year or longer uh, for those seeking pistol permits. Is it correct to say that the county you live in actually has a harder process to go through than the neighboring counties? I was actually trying to do it as quickly as I could um, it just, even with me doing it as quickly as possible, it took eight months. Is it correct that your county has a harder process than neighboring counties? Correct. Um, there is a little bit more restrictions. They're very strict on, uh, especially the safety, um, pistol safety course. They're, they want you to take a specific one, while others are more open to taking any safety course. Joe, would you describe that process for us? The very first thing that you need to do uh, to get a permit is a fingerprint test. Um, the fingerprint test took a very long time. I had to actually first call up to schedule an appointment and the, the student's appointment was over two months out just to get my fingerprints done. After getting the fingerprints done, they give you uh, this big list of things that you need to get together for references of people um, who live in your, your county. They want to like, um, bills from you so they know where you live. Uh, they actually send a cop to your house uh, to make sure that you actually live there. A big laundry list of things. That, that was just to name a few. But the biggest thing that was actually interesting was the gun safety course. Now, the gun safety course, they actually, you can go online um, and they'll give you time and dates that the county does it specifically for themselves and the website just keeps on pushing you to the same spot so you have one month to actually do a safety course from fingerprinting. after fingerprinting from uh after fingerprinting you have one month to actually do it the problem was when i went online to do a safety course it was over a month out so i'm like looking at this like how the heck am i supposed to do a safety course when it's over a month Later on, after looking into it and actually calling up a few places, they told me, oh no, you can actually, uh, there's other people that you can take the safety course from that are certified and okay, but they don't really show you that in the website. They actually don't, it's sort of like on the back end, you have to sort of like find it. It's like the very bottom of the page in the very fine print, like, oh yeah, you also can do these guys' courses. So it scared me there for a second that I wasn't going to be able to get that um, safety course done, but luckily I was able to. Um, and it took me a while because there's very few safety courses around here. They do it like once a week and it's like on like a day where it's like tough for me to get out. But I was able to get it done, get all my paperwork in um, the month. Where did you have to go to get the fingerprints taken? So I had to go to the sheriff's office, like the town over. Um, it's pretty much um, a jail facility. That's where actually I turned in my paperwork as well. So prior to the fingerprint process, you had paperwork filled out? Correct. Uh, there's, a, there's like these two small sheets that you have to fill out. It wasn't really any big paperwork. Uh, the big paperwork came in after the fingerprints. What was the fingerprinting process like? 
oh, the, uh, the fingerprints only took me like an, like an hour, and then for them to explain all the paperwork and everything. Were you able to go at your own convenience? When I called in for my appointment, we basically made the appointment at that point. They gave you like three times, either like 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, or like 5 o'clock. So, I mean, at least they give you like a little bit of a range. They gave you also an option of three days out of the week, so I picked the day that was most available for me. So for me, it wasn't too inconvenient. I can see for maybe for others, because it's only three days and then three times in that day that it could work. So, I mean, for me, it worked out. But for others, it could be actually a hassle. You actually don't even have an option of anywhere else to really do fingerprinting. This is your only option. At this point, were you even able to handle a pistol? Before this, in where I live and everything, you're not allowed to even touch a pistol at all. Uh, you can go outside the neighboring states and you're fine. So that was all good for me. Uh, you can go to a range and other stuff without the license. But with in, within the states, you're not even allowed to, like... I'm surprised you're even allowed to look at a pistol <laughs> with how restricted they very they are on it. What was the attitude of the deputies at the sheriff's office? The cops were like a little rough on it. They are like asking me questions here and there, who I was. Are you sure you want a pistol? Are you sure you want to do this? Pretty much I was just relaxed saying, yes, I'm good. I'm, I'm ready. I have the, everything set here that I'm going to need just to... Let's go through the process. You know, it's interesting that you say that because when I first went for my New York permit years ago, uh, the first guy was quite stern, uh, but on the second trip, the officer was much more willing uh, to help me through the process as well. So it seems there's a similar thing there. I wonder if that's their MO. In the end, I, I feel like they were probably more neutral. Um, I mean, even though that they felt like they were questioning me a little bit, I, I feel like it's also sort of their job to maybe get an idea of who I am a little bit. So no, I, I don't feel like they were like going, don't get a pistol or you shouldn't be doing this type of thing. No, I wasn't feeling like that at all. No. All right. So when I went to go turn in the f paperwork for the first time, <laughs> the very first thing that the uh, officer said to me was, you failed. Literally, those are the first words he, he said to me. And the reason um, he said I failed is on my references, I accidentally did two of the same people in the same household. And the way I read the instructions on there, I thought they were saying that they can't be from my household, not that they couldn't be in the same household of each other. So it was like a little bit of a miscommunication there. Um, so by not actually having that, I delayed the process for another week until I could actually um, get uh, refilled out with somebody new. So that sort of on my fault a little bit, I guess, for not reading it correctly, but it could be like, they could have made that a little bit simpler to understand. I wasn't expecting, I can't do two people who lives in a diff, totally different household than me. So I, I get it somewhat, but it was a little bit tricky on the wording. While I was actually there though, they were questioning me quite a bit, like where I worked. Um, and then when I gave a response, they sort of counteracted that response with like another like response of like not trusting me, I almost felt. They almost made me feel like having a gun maybe not might feel like it's not even a right. It's like a privilege. You, you you are only allowed to have a gun if you're good enough or if you have the right stuff. I was getting more of that feeling this time around. Is a gun not a right anymore? Like, I almost got that feeling at one point. This is sort of strange. I mean, I'm here. I have all my paperwork. I have all the stuff here for you. Why are you questioning me so much on these things like i understand once again it might be their job to question a little bit but they were pushing you a little far it's like i, I have all the stuff here i really do want to get this i'm trying to do this as well as i can you don't have to make it you're not supposed to be having a gun at this point it's just like uh, it was weird uh for that at least when i did return the um the next time around for my uh after filling it all out i actually got a new guy and he was wonderful. Uh, he, he was very understanding. He actually went through everything with me step by step. He was on a, a totally different like mindset. Like before I had multiple cops there and they sort of were getting up on me. This guy was just one-on-one -on -one action with me. And it, it made me feel a lot more comfortable actually. I was like, wow, thank you for actually going through this and checking it over with me. Um, showing like each part here, uh, it felt very comfortable. Um, I'm glad that I got him the second time around when I re returned for my paperwork. There's definitely an argument to be made that 
cars are a privilege that are viewed as a right and guns are a right that are treated like a privilege. Are you sure you want a license? Uh, where do you work? How, how long have you been there? It's a different experience for sure. What was the next step? The final part of it is after I turn in all my paperwork, it goes to a judge uh, so that they can fill it out and approve it or not, or if I need more information from me or not. Actually, this part, I was told a lot, this will take a long time. Uh, this will take months before I get it. So I'm expecting like, people were saying three to six months sometimes. When I got my permit, it was closer to a year since they actually misplaced my permit application. I'd called for several months to check on the status and they finally found it. Uh, apparently it was on top of a filing cabinet. Unbelievably for me, it only took three weeks. I, I was very surprised. Like I, I wasn't even prepared with everything because I was thinking, oh, I have time because it's gonna take months before I see anything. Um, it's gonna be more than a year process. I know some people out there are gonna be like, eight months, that's ridiculously long. And, and actually in our terms, it's pretty short comparatively. So after uh, the three weeks, I did get a letter in the mail that said, congratulations, I got a license. So I just literally that day was able to go to the sheriff's office. They took my picture and I just got the license. It was very quick, easy process to get. Then uh, they gave me another green paper coupon. I went to my dealer. He was able to just give it to me almost right away. That was the easiest part of the whole process. When you went to your FFL to pick up your pistol, what was that process like? Uh, he takes the paperwork. I had to fill out a few things. He just has to see my license, both driver's license and uh, firearm license. Uh, he calls some FBI agent uh, to verify the firearm, to verify who I am, and to get approval. And then that was it. You're telling us that not only did your county and state have to approve you with the paperwork, the fingerprinting, the interviews, and the background check, and the judge's approval, but the federal government did as well. Uh, with the FBI's background check database. Correct. Uh, that is an extra step where uh, the federal government, uh, the, uh, federal agent has to actually check me out as well. Uh, in that process, it did take months at least. It only took a few minutes for him to talk to him and tell him. But yes, uh, everybody has to be in on this. During this entire process, when were you actually able to uh, hold a firearm? It was actually the gun safety course. Uh, there was actually a store there where I could... Um, check out the firearm and actually hold it um, because there was actually an instructor there that allowed me to. If, if, there, if there isn't like a licensed instructor and stuff, you're not even allowed to touch a firearm still. Once again, it's like, I can look at it, but not touch it. And then I called my FFL, Dulos recommended me and uh, he got me the firearm that I wanted. What was the atmosphere of the safety class like? There was a lot of us because once again, they only have these very few times uh, during the months, it, it was <laughs> the safety class was one of the hardest parts because I had to find the time and everything. They were pretty much like, do everything right, be safe with this, watch out for what you do with it because the state will get you on almost anything. That, that was actually a big part was like, if you're like this and you pull out your firearm and this happens, watch out, make sure you, you call in or you do this correctly because you could be in huge trouble. They, they went through like a lot, a big part of it was the laws. Like this is the big law stuff that you need to watch out for, which self-protection or you have to be pretty like self-conscious. And then what your state actually thinks is okay to use a firearm for. Uh, it's a big responsibility uh, and they really did push that. I'm glad that they uh, were really pushing that. On the last piece of paperwork, they still ask you to opt out of having your personal information shared in a public database of pistol owners? Yes, uh, there was a sign up uh, for that. Basically, a, a thing where you sign and check mark, do you want to share the information or is it going to be private? The default on the form is actually opted in. You have to physically check it to be taken off that list, correct? Correct, opt out. That is absolutely correct. I remember around the time the SAFE Act was passed that local newspapers were trying to print names and addresses of every firearm uh, owner. I wonder what that motive is. So in the end, I am actually very glad that I went through this process, uh, that I got my firearm. It took a while, it was a trying process, but I, I, I made it through it. Um, I wish it was a little bit simpler. I, I mean, I feel like it was very restricted, very like time process. I feel like some people might not be able to go through the whole process because it just takes 
a long time, you, you're like, man, I just have to wait this long for just a fingerprint? Or will I even have a day where I can do the fingerprints? Or a day where I can do the safety course? They limit you on that stuff so much and they give you time limits. I can see people not being able to make it. Where the process is where you end it. They make the process hard enough where people will drop out of that first before actually even getting the firearm. But I'm glad that I made it. I'm glad that I was able to pull through and uh, get my firearm. I'm really glad you made it too, especially in the time you did. Put the full process here uh, in perspective. I was thinking about it. Uh, it took me about two months to get my fingerprints done. After that, it took me another month or two to do the safety course to fill out the paperwork then i had to go back and redo the paperwork because i didn't do it correctly the next time or first time then after they did that they sent it out the judge took care of it and then i got my paperwork and then on that very same day once i got that in the mail i was able to go in get my license and then get my firearm for my ffl if somebody wanted to go through the um, process and they were looking into getting a firearm, I definitely say it's worth going through everything even though that it is difficult, it takes a long time, but in the end if you're really looking into it to protect yourself, I recommend it to family, to friends, uh, and I would encourage them. I'll be there to help you um, out with it and if you need me for anything, I'm more than available to give information or my experience of it. Whew! That was a long process. <laughs> Glad we got done. Thanks, Joe. No problem. I'm not... This was a lot of fun, Dulos. Thankfully, Joe still maintains his Second Amendment rights, even though they are severely limited. Uh, a lot of forces are coming together to try and strip us of these rights of life, liberty, and freedom. And a lot of the world uh, does not agree with our freedoms here, but they don't have them. They've given them up. They've lost them. They don't understand what it means to be free. And I'm afraid that America is losing that. And so for us, who are on the lines of freedom, on the sides of freedom. Keep standing up for what's right. Because the NRA stopped doing it. The politicians aren't really doing it. So it's up to you and me at this point to continue legally uh, following due process and law, to continue to elect people into office who are pro-gun, to continue supporting pro-Second Amendment uh, organizations. But also, we need to stand up for what's right in our social circles, in our families, in our day-to-day -day life. We need to be responsible. But it's up to us, whether you own a gun or not, whether you want to or not, to stand up for the freedom for others to own them, to have real common sense when it comes to gun control. Because if we forget history, we are doomed to repeat it. If the only people that have guns are the government and bad guys, well, I don't want to live in that society. Is there a difference between the government and bad guys? Are you really safe when you cannot protect yourself from either? Now, I'm not saying our government is bad. I think government in itself is good. But a government that wants to strip you of your rights to provide for your family, to protect your family, to protect others, I think that's something to be worried about. History clearly shows us the outcome of governments run amok. And people run amok. People these days are running amok. Gun control is not gonna fix it. We need to get back to the Bible. We need to get back to God. And even if you don't believe in that, you have to look at the way our country was founded and see the fruit that came out of that. Time is now to stand up for what's right, to act, to speak up, to vote, to pressure uh, politicians to pass uh, pro-freedom legislation, to speak to your friends, your family, your loved ones, to stand up in the public square, stand up on YouTube, stand up on the internet, whatever channel you have available. Time is running out, guys. Our rights are being stripped every day. People growing up and in society these days are heavily against it. It's only a matter of time until time's run out. So guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support. All the likes, comments, favorites, subscribes, all that, all that YouTube stuff. So may God bless you. Keep standing up for what's right.